So let's go to Girls Who Code 2012. You started it. 30,000 plus graduates mm -hmm. of the program. Is it true that you didn't know how to code when you started it? No, I'm like the weirdest person to start Girls Who Code. <laughs> not only am I not a coder, I was terrified of math and science growing up. But I saw through running for office the opportunities that coding was creating, yeah. right? There's like 500,000 open jobs right now. These jobs are, are being created at a time where we are relying on American women to be our breadwinners. There's 500,000 yep. of these open computer science jobs yep. now. I think the latest numbers, 2015, show only about 40,000 yes. graduates yes. in the field. 40,000 total graduates, and fewer than one out of five of those graduates are women. Wow. And it wasn't always that way. No, the, it was better in the 1980s. So much better. What problems do you think that our country could solve? If we saw parity in terms of graduating classes in computer science, for example. Every single problem. And, and if you go to our Project Gallery Board on our website, you'll see. I mean, I have girls, I have two girls, uh, Lucy and Maya, who built an app on lead poisoning because they saw that kids were dying in Flint, Michigan. In Flint, yeah. I have a bunch of girls in Austin who built a machine learning tool to track where Zika was going because Congress couldn't get it together to pass a bill for funding. I have seen girls tackle every single big problem from cancer mm -hmm to lead poisoning, to climate change, to homelessness, to bullying in schools. I mean, there is literally no problem that we can't solve. And, you know, and it, it, listen, here's the thing, right? It's, it's, if you think about right now the companies that uh, many male entrepreneurs have built, I often feel like they're building companies to like replace their mothers, right? It's like, I'm hungry and I'm sitting on my couch, Uber Eats, you know what I mean? I don't feel like walking my dog, let me call WAG, right? Or they're using artificial intelligence to like build basket sizes in Target. Like, no, like girls will use technology to solve big problems. But are you, come on, are you saying that men, companies started by men are not solving big problems? I, I'm not saying that they're not solving big problems, but I'm often saying that they're solving problems that they are uniquely feeling. I will often judge hackathons, which are with yeah. a lot of boys and the things that they want to solve are just different and I'm not saying all I don't want to you know have sweeping generalizations but one of the things that I think I have found that is uniquely female is our empathy and our seeing what's happening in our home or our community or the world mm -hmm. and wanting to do something about it and to me it's it's game-changing it's it's why it was the biggest aha for me mm -hmm. when I started Girls Who Code. I was like, oh my God, like we're gonna empower thousands and thousands of girls to like use technology to solve big problems. Trust me, I think that the kinds of ideas and companies you're gonna see as we give girls and women the power of computing and technology is gonna fundamentally change. But what about the argument that some have made that sort of the rise of girls or the rise of women means man down, if you will, that it comes at, can, can come at the expense, depending on how it's messaged, at, uh, of little boys. Do you see that argument? I mean, listen, I'm a, I'm a mother to a son. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing that brings me more joy than reading to him, you know, about Rosie Revere, the engineer, eight of the scientists, right, and, and these amazing books that we're going to have coming out with Penguin. I think all kids should learn how to code. Like, I think that this is an opportunity we have to give every single one of our children. I think the problem is, right now, culturally, the images that we see are very male. And so we have to be thoughtful and think about how, to, how can we actually be more, how can we open the door? Let's talk about the role of the government in all of this. It confounds a lot of people when they try to wrap their head around why some classes are mandated in public schools yeah. across America. and classes that can literally, will literally lead to the jobs of the future like coding classes are not. Yeah. Should it be government mandated in, in, all, in all schools? I'm a big proponent of mandatory computer science education. Absolutely. So why isn't it? Well, I think that, I think we're working on it. You know, there's a movement out there to get computer science in the classroom, um, but it has to replace something else. I think the first step though is educating policymakers that, that they're like, that literally technology is changing the way that we live and work. And it's happening so fast, right? I, I represent a nonprofit. I represent a movement that's about activism for girls and advocacy for girls. And you know, so much more of what we do, Poppy, than just teaching coding is about teaching bravery and resilience and confidence. You know, we're, we're going to the NGA and I'm taking the stage with Republican governors. It's not about politics. 
it's not about, I mean, in fact, one of the things that excites me the most about our work is that coding is uh, coding in girls is actually quite nonpartisan. So it's not about it's not about Republicans versus Democrats. What Republican lawmaker, governor, senator, yeah. state level anything have you found has been the best for you to work with? Do you you know, have you felt like as a Democrat like we can really make some make some change here. Oh, I totally think we can. Governor Hutchinson and I are actually kicking off a, a girls hackathon. I'm having several meetings um, with probably many Republican governors to talk about like how do we keep our eyes on gender. I actually think that there is a massive opportunity um, in the states to really create some bipartisan support for for computer science education. This isn't something. This isn't a political issue. Thank you.